When it comes to garden centrepieces, you just can't beat a lawn. It's soft if the children fall over, it's a good playing surface, it sets off the plants in the beds and borders around it. In fact, it's just a jolly good thing. And if you make one from seed, you can do a huge area for very little cost. What I'm doing here is making a lawn that wraps around this tree. Now, it's quite a light canopy. It's not going to be too heavy a shade to kill the grass out. The preparation of the earth for either seeding or turfing is exactly the same. Fork it over and take out any big rocks and stones and any thick, deep-rooted perennial weeds. Now the roots of grass don't go very deep, perhaps only three or four inches maximum. But if you didn't cultivate the ground properly, it would dry out very, very quickly. There were lots of stones in the subsoil there and the surface would not be able to draw up moisture. That's why this slightly deeper cultivation really does pay off. If your ground is very heavy, very clay, very waterlogged, work in lots and lots of sharp grit to help drainage. You can work in organic matter for the same reason. And if your soil is very light and very fluffy, lots of organic matter will help to hold on to moisture and give that lawn every chance of doing well, even in dry weather. There we are, forked over. So, we're ready to sow the seed, yes? No, it's far too fluffy and it's also uneven. So the first thing you've got to do is tread it, shuffle along with your heels to really firm that earth into place. Takes a while. If you have an enormous lawn, you also need an enormous group of friends. You get them all round one evening when you forked it over and you put on a record of Zorba the Greek. Da, 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 da. You get my drift. Make sure your neighbours are out or they'll think completely bonkers. What this does is it gets rid of air pockets. You won't regret this bit of extra time in preparation later on. What you will now notice is that there are bumps and hollows. You need a rake to adjust that, raking off the bumps into the hollows. So get your eye fairly low down so you can see what you're at. Long, sweeping strokes, all the while casting your eye over the ground, trying to make that whole surface as even as possible. So now it's much more level, except it will not have escaped your notice that we fluffed it all up again. Yep, Zorba once more. You see, it's not just a trample, it's a shuffle. And by shuffling, you're breaking down those little clods into finer crumbs. And this is just one final raking over. You'll see now the soil is a whole lot firmer. Now this surface is prepared in exactly the same way, whether you want to make your lawn from turf or from seed. And on here, I'm going to sow seed. There are different kinds of lawn seed mixtures, and you want one that's suitable for your purpose. If your ground is a bit shady, you can get shade mixtures. If you want a fine bowling green, get a mixture for that. But bowling green grasses tend to be very fine. There are a lot of work to cut and they tend to get fungus diseases. The best kind to go for really is an all round dwarf ryegrass mixture that's hard wearing, but which won't produce those long tufts that always escape the mower. Get yourself a plastic cup like this one, mark it about halfway down, and then you'll know exactly how much seed to put on each square metre. 
Try and sow on a relatively windless day. That way, the seed, which is quite light, goes where you want it to go rather than into the nearby bed or border. If you just shuffle this from side to side, about 18 inches above the ground, you'll see you get this salt and peppering effect. Now, if you're not at all sure what a square metre or a square yard looks like, mark it out with canes. I like to think I've got a fair idea. And that is about a square metre. There's a great tendency to over sow, to use too much seed. It's pointless. If you sow too thickly, not only will it cost you more and you're wasting seed, they'll come up too close together and if the weather's at all damp, they may well die off, damp off, we call it. There's a very good reason why it's called damping off. The young grass plants rot. They really don't need to be absolutely cheek by jowl. Though you must always remember the age-old country saying, one for the rook, one for the crow, one to die and one to grow. You're always going to get some birds coming and having a peck, but you will find that however good they are, They'll always leave enough to make a lawn. The one thing you may also have a problem with is cats. They uh, come along and, um, you know, dig a little hole and um, leave you a little present. Well, the way to stop that is quite simple. If you get some twiggy pea sticks and lay them across the surface, it sort of gets in the cat's way and they tend to leave them alone. That's it. Now, you can just leave that. It'll be absolutely fine if you're worried that a lot of the seed is going to blow away or that you've got a particular bird problem, a very, very light raking over. A lot of seeds, like grass, need a bit of light to germinate. You bury them too deeply. They're such fine seeds, they won't come up. So there really is no point in covering them over much. There's absolutely no need to water, not in this country you'll find that a shower of rain will very soon be forthcoming. What I wouldn't do is to sow the seed in really hot, dry weather. The two best times to sow grass seed are late spring and late summer, early autumn. That way the ground is moist and warm, but in summer it will be too hot for it and in winter far too cold for the grass to germinate. So late spring, late summer, early autumn, the perfect time. And you'll probably notice behind me that the grass is coming up. This was sowed just three weeks ago. Now the grass blades are about an inch and a half high. A little bit longer than that and it'll be the perfect time to mow, just taking off the top half inch. It looks patchy, but once you've mowed, you'll encourage the grass to push out sideways and fill those gaps. And then you can start mowing once a week or once a fortnight. Making a new lawn from seed isn't a quick fix, but if you're sowing a large area, it's relatively inexpensive, and by the time nine months or a year have elapsed, you'll have an established lawn that sets off the plants in your garden and gives you pleasure on a daily basis. <laughs>